a brief little gap between what we see the first four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, six seals have been opened, and no, five, no, yeah. Well, I done got confused. And anyway, this is kind of a pause before we continue into what I believe will be the Great Tribulation. And it will be the seventh seal, which includes the seven trumpets and the seven bow judgments. Right now, after... Uh, we see that the four horsemen ride and the sky recedes. You know, the people are basically begging the mountains and the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the face of Him who sits on the throne in the wrath of the Lamb. That's in chapter 6. It says, After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth or the sea or on any tree. Mm. 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 Our weather patterns are based on wind circulation mm -hmm. and water circulation. Here we have four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. And lest you be like some foolish wise people who say that, see, that proves the Bible's not correct because they're preaching a flat earth. Um, these angels are at the four compass points of the earth. Mm -hmm. North and south, east and west. So it's not like the earth is flat and everything. This is them standing at the four compass points of the earth. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. So we have four angels holding back the four winds. <coughs> And these angels are going to be allowed to harm the earth. But evidently a higher ranking angel comes and tells them, hold on. Wait. Wait. Mm -hmm. Till he seals the people who are going to be servants of God in this tribulation period. Yep. Now, a lot of people have claimed to be these. But as we read, we're going to see that they don't have the credentials. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children What's that say? Israel. Of Israel. Yep. <clears throat> were sealed. Who are the 144,000? The Jews. Aren't they the ones telling you that? Well, they'll tell you that all day long, but they have a problem. Yeah. So they, grew, they grew to more than 144,000. Yeah. It's the redeemed Jews. These are redeemed Jews. 144,000 Apostle Pauls on fire for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These aren't Gentiles. Nope. No, they're Jews. They're Jews. They're from the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. It goes on. It says, Of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 were sealed. Mm -hmm. Of the tribe of Gad, 12,000 were sealed. 
Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Levi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Iskar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Just begin to see a pattern here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. Now there are a couple of irre irregularities here. One, Reuben normally would have been first place. He was first born. But Reuben committed a sin mm -hmm. that caused him to be set out mm -hmm. and placed below his birth position because he slept with one of J uh, Joseph's, I call them wives, they call them maid servants, but uh, they were maids to his original two wives. Uh, Rebecca, not Rebecca, Rachel and Leah. But anyway, that shows us Reuben was not lost because of his sin. You know, a lot of Christians think if you sin, of course it's always egregious sin, and they're never ones who have lost it. But they believe you can lose your salvation. And this shows us, you know, like Reuben, mm -hmm. he didn't lose his place as a child of Israel. But his sin did make him lose his position. So as Christians, when we sin... It does not make us lose our salvation because that belongs to God mm. and only God could cast us out. Right. And He said He'll never do that. Right. That's right. No, one is no one else can pluck us out of His hands and right. no one includes us. That's right. You know, because so many people say, well, nobody else can pluck us out of God's hand, but maybe we can no. Why are we better than God? We cannot pluck ourselves out of we God's can. hand. But we can damage our position and our relationship by our sin. Mm -hmm. God will always forgive us because He says. You know, if we bring our sin to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. Sure. But just because we're forgiven does not mean that He is not going to let us suffer the consequences of events that we set in motion. You go out and have a relations with a woman that's not your wife and you get her pregnant, I don't care how long and how hard you pray that that child disappears. <coughs> What you set in motion is going to come to pass. And probably a whole lot more if you're married and your wife thinks that. You know, you go out and you ruin your name, God will forgive you, but will you get your good name back? No. 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 Do people go out there and rejoice and shout hallelujahs and lift you up to heaven when you're doing right? Yep. I haven't found that to be so much so. But you let a pastor fail or a Christian fall, then it will be shouted mm. to the furthermost regions of the earth. Because the devil likes nothing more than
person to so braid great. somebody that he's caused to sin. Small victim. Not, not excusing the person. But he loves to pray that stuff around. And there's nothing worse than ever hearing, and I thought you were a Christian. Mm -hmm. no. That's like the woman that asked Jerry Clow. Mm -hmm. He was wearing a big old necklace with a big old pin that had the Star of David in it. it had a cross. It had a big old diamond in the cross. And the lady said, don't you think that's awful vain of you to come out here wearing that? What is that anyway? He says, well, the Star of David is for the roots of Christianity and Judaism. The cross is for Christianity. Christ died for us. She said, well, what about that big old diamond? He said, you're right. That's my vanity. Pray for me. Jerry <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clark. Is he still alive? Mm -mm. Mm. No. He passed on. I wish I had all of his records up. I had some that burned up. Yeah, I had some of his cassette tapes that got stolen out of my pickup when I wrecked it back when we were just dating. I got to meet him in person at a radio station in Ontario, California, because I answered some question or something, and so they invited me to meet him, and he gave me an autograph record. He came to our high school. Oh, I, hope that, I hope you had that. I wish I had. That'd be worth something now to have. Yeah, burn up. He uh, he came to our high school in Georgia, and I, I I remember hearing him, but I couldn't see him. You know, I was, yeah, I'd already had wrestling practice, and I was ready to go home. Was <laughs> My dad had all his stuff too. So yeah, but you know, there aren't many good, clean comedians out there that no. these days. No. Mark Lowry, Jeff Foxworthy, Gabrielle uh, yeah, and Jeff, those two hadn't been doing much lately. Nope. But, uh, yeah, I like the Bill Engel. He said he was on the phone with his wife. He was flying in home. And, uh, And said, oh my gosh, somebody hit a deer. And she asked, in the air? <laughs> On a Santa Claus deer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like Jerry said, they threw the snakes in the church. He said, there's not a door where would you like one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to be having any snakes in the church unless I take them home as pets. Um, yeah, and I don't that. take no venomous snakes home. Mm. I don't take any. Mm. Nope, not even a deal. Well, why were these mm. all? Well, that made 144,000. Yeah. Mm. All right. That's but the... One of the things that happened in AD 70 when the Romans sacked the temple in Jerusalem mm -hmm. as the genealogy and the records of such were all burned up. So, you know, there are Jews that know they're Jews. And then there are people that probably have no idea they're Jews. But... This shows God still knows who is a child of Israel mm -hmm. and what type of tribe they're from. And when this comes, Billy nailed it to the spot. He said, these are going to be like Apostle Paul or more so. They're going to do in seven years what we haven't been able to do in 2000. Mm -hmm. 
They are going to evangelize the whole world. Mm -hmm. After these things, I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. So who do we think these people are? And again, a lot of people want to come back in and say, well, this must be the church. <clears throat> but what did we see between chapter 4 and 5? Sure. So this yeah. is actually going to be people that were saved, right? These are tribulation saved. saved. Right. Yeah. So if anybody ever asks you, can people be saved after the right. rapture of the church, the Bible says, if you put such stock in it, that yes, there's going to be a great myriad of people saved during this tribulation period. Yeah, it says these people, uh, it says um, during the seven year period they will be saved, martyred, and people to enter heaven. Mm -hmm. So it will be in a time of unparalleled judgment. It is also a time of unparalleled grace and salvation. Yeah, so a myriad of people are going to come to faith in Christ, but there's also a myriad of people who either through the plagues on earth, through the government of the Antichrist, uh, which is totally anti-Christian, uh, all these other things to make it through the tribulation alive is going to be a very very difficult time. But there will be. I was talking to a pastor, a very good pastor, a very faithful pastor. And we came to this subject and you know, he was of the opinion, you know, he says, if there were lost in here and we were talking about this, he'd say, I'd never agree with you. Because of all the delusions and stuff, I preach that if a person hears about Christ in our the church era and the tribulation comes, that they won't be able to be saved. And I said, really? Most of them are dead. I mean, when the period starts. Well, the church is raptured out. So all those that believe before the tribulation period are in heaven. Yeah, mine says these people didn't go up in the rapture of no. the church since they were not yet saved. So they'll be these saved after the rapture. people who are saved after the rapture. Right. Now, my belief is that a lot of them are going to be people... Maybe people who have gone to church all their life. But we're playing at it. We're on the edge. Eddie. Or people that, you know, never really made a commitment. Their grandpa or their daddy was a preacher, so they were pretty sure they were going. Now I've got news for them. There aren't any grandchildren in heaven. You're either a child of God or you're not. Right, absolutely. You are not going to ride anybody's coattails. Nope. Salvation is a one-to-one -one relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. One thing. Whereby He is exalted. Yeah. And we are worshiping Him and serving His Lordship. Like what? Well, like this one um, gentleman who was a preacher. He, he, he referred to, um, when you referred to people we need to pray for, he said, pray for the dragons. And if you really catch on what he's talking about, he's using that as a, um, the word, physical word is related to something. To say. Exactly right. Pray for, 
when you let him in your doorway and when he was talking about when we're doing that class but at the same time pray for those speak those kind of people because they need prayer need Christ they need Christ in their life yeah what does the devil love to do to church so of everything including your testimony so he down. loves to get in and mm-hmm. start a little bit of backbiting a little bit of bickering mm-hmm. he loves to get those phones going the vision People coming, fussing about this, fussing about that. They're Don't tongues. you think it's we ought to do this? That's like that pastor. Don't you time. think we ought to be doing How come he's doing this? What do you think about his preaching? I don't know, but he should preach this way. Amen. He should use this Bible, not that Bible. That's like that pastor I told you one time in one of our DB forums. Uh, he was he was he brought up a good point. He was so focused on his not on his marriage and on God. He was so focused on his boat and everything, his physical items, and then a bunch of people just chimed in. And just told them, you know, you need to look, you know, not look at that physical items. God gave us those physical items to oversee. It's not about because those physical items. If we came into this world, you can't, you can't take we would go out of it. Exactly right. Well, it's like a church that I went to prior to this one. Mm-hmm. You know, two women, mm-hmm. two older women mm-hmm. got in there and they didn't like because uh, our pastor preached out of both the King James Version and the New King James Version. Mm-hmm. Yes. They said that a pastor should only preach out of the King James Version. And... And if you ask them, they probably would think that it floated down out of heaven from God. Yeah, so they just, uh, they they tore up the whole church. I mean, now there's, I think at that time, there was probably 80-something members going to that church faithfully every morning. And now there's probably three. And that's see what the pastor that's should the have pastor done and invited his wife. them to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the pastor, him, his wife, and somebody else. Mm-hmm. The pastor that they jumped on and everything, he doesn't preach there no more. He preaches some no, other church. They just took right. the easy way out and said, I'm out here. Yeah, yeah. So, but it'd probably been the same scenario if he'd have called them on it. Yeah. Because usually there are people who've been there forever, think they run everything. Yeah. And but I don't uh, think those two go. Answer that very thing. I don't okay. think those two go to church there anymore. No, they destroyed it. They have moved on to somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, after these things, I looked a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nation, tribes, people, tongues, and standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in. What's that? White robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God. Amen. Myriads of people saved out of the tribulation period. Mm -hmm. Angels. uh, Mm -hmm. The elders, uh, somewhat of a reposition of the church age, those saved. And then you get to the throne guardians, Mm -hmm. the cherubim, Mm -hmm. seraphim. Guarding the throne in the holiness of God. The angels Mm -hmm. that stood around Mm -hmm. So you see people saved in the tribulation, you see people saved in the church age, and you see angels all doing one thing in common. Praising God. God. Praising God Mm -hmm. for salvation. Singing amen. So more salvation seems to take place in the seven years of tribulation than takes place any other time. Any other time. Of course, you have the 144,000 who've been sealed hmm. against harm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they go to all nations. All across the world. So that everybody during this time is going to hear. But at the same time, God's casting judgment on this earth. Mm hmm. 
and a lot of people are going to be killed by the judgment. We've already seen that a third, what, a third, third was, yeah. Yeah, and we're fixing that as we go forward. See another quarter, and then more. So, well, one of the things too that gets me too is uh, with these guys preaching the way they are. They can't say that they didn't hear it. They can't, yeah. you know. It won't fall on deaf ears this time. No, no, because it got their attention. That's right. That's right. Everything is here. Here, so they have it here. That's right. Finally, uh, I'm saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. That's right. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes, and where did they come from? And we need to remember this. Because of so many people claiming either to be the 144,000 or the myriad that's in white robes, some churches claim they're the only ones going to be there. Uh, we know quite a few of them. Mm. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he te tells me, said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation. There it is right there. there. Mm -hmm. And have washed their robes and made them white. So. In the blood What's of the that? Lamb. In the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> In the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That's right. What was the offering that Abel made that God accepted? The little lamb that was first. Mm. Was no blemish. It was his first. Mm -hmm. Of his flesh. Uh, the blood thereof blood and the fat. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Showing that even as far back as Abel, God was setting up a substitutionary death for the sins of for the, the sins mm -hmm. of the world. Mm -hmm. Now that lamb didn't save Abel. Nope. All it was was a reminder that we had to have. A substitutory yeah. death on our behalf. Yeah, yeah, right. So as they obeyed God, their sins were covered, right? Mm -hmm. But not totally forgiven. No. Mm -hmm. But it does say that their robes were washed right. white, white in the blood of the Lamb. Lamb. So yes. when Jesus Christ came and paid for all the sins, yes. all the faith. Mm -hmm of the people who were making these sacrifices and believing in God and their future Lamb of God that would take away all the sins of the world. Sure. It's the same as during the church age when we depend on Jesus Christ to forgive our sins. Mm -hmm. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ that washes us. And we see in the tribulation, guess what? It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ that washes them. And we all have to come by faith. Amen. Amen. Well, how can we have faith unless God gives it to us? Lord. I believe that God will honor anyone who seeks truly to find Him. Mm -hmm. Even if that is the most remote place on earth, if they start searching for the true God, <coughs> Absolutely. I believe the Holy Spirit oh, more will be given to us. Because everybody, you know, you hear people all the time try to make a case, well, what about these people who've never heard about God? Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at What's Romans chapter 1, 
you see that God considers nobody innocent. True. Nope. Because at one time their forefathers knew about God and chose to reject Him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Therefore, all of mankind is guilty before God mm -hmm. and deserves to go to hell. It's just by God's marvelous grace that we are saved from what we deserve. Mm -hmm. Yes. By God's grace. Amen, brother. That's right. Because if we, you know, I've heard people say, well, I want what I deserve. No, I don't. <laughs> That's right. No, no, no. I want That's what they, they, they have a tendency to say also, I want what's coming to me. Yeah. The grace. <laughs> you the heard grace. that before, Ralph? Ralph's like, yeah, I've heard that before. I, I want know what's coming to me. I want what's coming to me. That's what they say. I want what's coming. No, you don't, buddy. You don't want what's coming to you. <laughs> around the night, God's God's knows. grace. Because what's coming is what you deserve isn't what you want. Uh, there they are for they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne would dwell amongst them. Amen. Now there's going to be another temple during the millennial reign. But when we get to the new heaven and the new earth, there will not be. Because it says God and Christ will be the temple. Mm -hmm. okay. They shall neither hunger anymore nor thirst anymore. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living foundations of water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eye. I love that part. You know why? Because there's... Where else in the Bible does it talk about Jesus telling someone that I am the living water? If you drink of me, then you will never thirst again. Yeah. That's right. The woman at the well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. This just backs it up, brother. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, these are all things that are going to be prominent during the tribulation period. Well, why should a Christian be hungry? Well, remember, if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy, sell, or trade. Right? So food for the Christian is going to be awfully scarce and hard to get. Then, uh, you know, water. And as we're going to see next week when we look at some of the plagues that are going to come on earth, you know, a large portion of the water is going to be poison. Mm -hmm. So thirst may be a big thing. Yep. And heat, when, uh, you know, the sun is darkened <laughs> and the moon is like blood. You know, I was reading one commentary that said, you know, when a great mountain thrown from heaven and hit sir it could cause all the vi uh, volcanoes to start erupting and uh, anyway throw up all kinds of dust and Earth ash into the air which would make it as if the sun was darkened and give a red tint to the moon yeah. you know which would make a greenhouse out of the earth again and just we think it's hot now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the things it says they will not suffer are the things that they may have suffered greatly in the <clears throat> tribulation period. And here they're in heaven, they're with Christ, and he says that there won't be any more of that. He won't be in. He will be your heat. He will be your food. He will be thirsty. He will be our yeah. shepherd. And what does a true shepherd do? Takes care of his sheep. Mm -hmm. Takes care Provides of his sheep. for everything that they need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
he said that. And the she true shepherds. So. I've watched a little documentary on it. I've never seen it in person. But you know where it says shepherd knows his sheep and the sheep know him? They aren't kidding. These I'm shepherds kidding would come up, all the sheep would be in a big pen. They'd open it up. A shepherd would do. come in, they open the gate, they'd call their sheep, the ones. and a group of sheep would walk out with that shepherd. Another one come up, they'd go out with that shepherd. Yeah, because they know his voice. They, they know, know his voice. His they know he's his walk, taking his, care of them. Yeah. Right. His walk. They know his voice, his smell, his everything. Yeah. And uh, I've seen it. Um, things that you know you don't think of till they point them out is he leads you to still waters. I didn't know that sheep wouldn't drink out of a running stream. No. If it was fast running, they will not. They won't even get close to the edge. So you got to find somewhere where it's fairly calm. And then the shepherd, if he had a sheep that was constantly going astray, he would literally break a leg and keep that sheep with him to keep it from getting in trouble. You know, we think, how cruel. But they said those were usually the sheep that grew closest to the shepherd. Because mm -hmm. they had to depend on him more. They had to right. depend on him so much more. And, the rest and he was there for them so much more. But the reason he had to do what he did is because if not, they were going to get into trouble and get killed. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well... Lord, I want to do right. <laughs> I don't want my I don't leg. want my leg broken. There's enough of me broke already. I don't right. want no more. Mm -hmm. I already had a broken hand. I don't want no more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't need. I don't need that. There are some lessons that I have learned, mm -hmm. and they didn't come easy. <laughs> I know that's right. So, you know. <laughs> So these are the 144,000. Anybody tries to tell you that these are anyone other and the than Israel, yeah. Israelites, is wrong. Completely wrong. Yeah. Get away. Yeah. It's crazy for Because they're telling you heresy. Mm -hmm. I'm one that when the Bible makes when the sense of the Bible makes perfect sense, look for no other. Mm -hmm. And here it clearly tells us that these that are sealed are a special group of missionary Jews yep. that are going to go forth and evangelize. proclaim and evangelize. They're going to be on fire for the Lord. Yep. How they're going to survive the Antichrist is only by the grace yes, of God. God. Yes, he's going to be And he's going to protect you. He's going to be so. So, and there are two others that are going to be protected by God. Well, and we often put a whole lot more stock in them than we do mm -hmm. this 145 or 44 943, 945, 144,000 Those are the two that the Jewish preachers. You know, talking about evangelism reminded me, Bruce said that he was in Israel and he was talking about how people in his church, they're in the Amazon right now, and they go to a place that has no electricity, no phones, nothing. You can get on your cell phone. <laughs> And they bring them some things, like reading glasses and things, but they go every year and try to witness to this, these people that don't have any other contact. Right. That's also a real thing. And that's a good thing. Yeah, that's a good thing. Pretty awesome. All right, any other questions, comments? No critiques? It was a good, good class. Asked for that once and got it. <laughs>
<laughs> Brother Ralph, would you close us? Thank you, the Lord, for your word. Yes, Lord. For our teacher and leaders. Yes. Helping us to understand the things that we may or may not have known. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your salvation. And you are the only salvation we have. Yes, sir. Lead us. Be with us. Be with each of these prayer requests that we made tonight. Comfort, strengthen, and heal the yes, Lord. Bless us now as we go to our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.